This is Pad Love with Pad's Two Cents, and we are God's Remnant meeting at God's Church of Love Online, reading Romans chapter 1, followed by Pat's Two Cents. Okay. Now, we all know, that see, when you take God out of the equation, you have removed the, uh, this is an allegorical sense, uh, you have removed the disinfectant. And when you remove the disinfectant, you allow bacteria to create or to wreak havoc on society. The bacteria of the soul, the bacteria of the mind, the bacteria of the heart, and intentions of the heart, the bacteria of motives, it all becomes so contaminated that you cannot even decipher what's really clean any longer because everything is so contaminated that nobody is sensitive to righteousness, to cleanliness, to holiness. Nobody's nobody's sensitive to that. Nobody's hungry for it. See, the Bible says when you hunger and thirst for, for God and his righteousness, all the other good things will be added to you. See, you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I have to say it correctly. Seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Well, all the other things are talking about the goodness of God, the blessings of God. Woo! <laughs> we have turned into a society. Help me, Father. We have turned into a society that relishes in junk food relishes in junky love, relishes in a trashy lifestyle, relishes in, in low order lifestyles. We relish in that. We don't have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. We don't care about what pleases God. We have no fear of God. And when you have no fear of God, you don't concern yourself with the consequences of your actions. We have to be very, very careful in these last days, even especially those of us who are trying to live for God. We are in the world, not of it. And you have to remember something. If you walk into a room full of people who have flu, colds, strep throat, pneumonia, whatever the case may be, you walk into a room filled with sick people with infectious disease. If you have not girded yourself up with echinacea, vitamin C, antioxidants, all kinds of things, to keep your system, uh, your response, your immunity at an all-time high, you will end up catching somebody's infection. You will catch the flu, or you will catch the strep throat, or a cold. You'll catch something. But that is why we as believers living in this world that is so bent on sin, that is so accustomed and comfortable with contamination. We have to do everything in our power to guard ourselves with the word of God through prayer, relationship with God, intimacy with God, intimacy with other believers. We have to gird ourselves up in spiritual warfare, taking authority, tearing down, building up, casting out. We have to do everything it takes in order not to get defiled by the atmosphere that's in this world, in our workplace, in our 
surroundings, our family settings, the music that's on the airwaves, the media. We have to be very careful because everything is inundated with the atmosphere of sinfulness. We have to be careful. It's almost like being dummied down. Have you ever had a vibrator on your skin so long that after a while you go to touch your skin and it seems like you've lost some sensitivity because of the constant vibration? Well, that's what ends up happening in the spirit realm. We get so bombarded by the things of the world that we become numb to the things of God. We become numb to holiness. We become numb to love. We become numb to integrity. Yes. We are in a world that encourages unnatural affection, that promotes lusts, uncleanness, malice, lies, self, self-adoration, self-worship, selfie, selfie, I feel pretty. And we just get so caught up, me, myself, and I, if it feels good, baby, do it. You ain't hurt nobody, you just do your thing. No. I remember that old song years ago when the song started turning south. One of them was, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. And that is the, the mindset of society now. If what I'm doing is wrong and I love it, I don't want to do right. No, it's my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. Come on now. That's not God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed. I will talk about God in the doctor's office. I will mention God on the, in the bank line. I will mention God at the grocery store. God is a, the, the integral, the center core of my life. Everything about my life is centered on God. Everything I do is based on how will this affect my relationship with God. Even the things I allow myself to think, I have to keep a constant inventory of my thought life. Thought life affects attitude. Attitude affects behavior. And see, God knows that our hearts are deceitfully wicked. So we have to guard our hearts. We have to keep all the insects out and all the bacteria and the germs out of our heart. We can't allow that stuff to settle in. Don't become comfortable and complacent with hatred, with disrespect, with disregard, with selfishness, self-centeredness. Don't become comfortable with lustful ideas, and games, and the games people play, and the lies, and the schemes of the world. Don't become comfortable with that, with theft, and stealing, and, and cheating, and conniving, and uh, backstabbing, and oh my goodness, betrayal. Don't become comfortable with that. Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, you chuck that baby quick, fast, in a hurry. Do not become roommates with it. <sighs> Second Chronicles 7.14, I believe it's Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, this is God speaking, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. 
uh, forgive their sins and will heal their land. When the land starts going crazy and the earth starts shaking and holes start falling through and floods come and fires break out and all kind of mess start and storms start getting freaky deaky on us and folks are dying here and there from all kind of volcano eruptions and all kind of landslides and mudslides and oh my goodness let me tell you when the land starts regurgitating baby that's part of, of the reason is because of the abundance of sin on this earth. God says, I will heal their land, everything that pertains to them. If your land is blessed, you're blessed. If your land is cursed, guess what? You have to muddle through the curses and the, the, the demonic strongholds and the the attacks, uh, oh my goodness, uh, you don't realize how this, this thing is like a rabbit hole. It just goes down, 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 ad infinitum. It's almost to infinity because what, help me. See, what we don't realize, it's not just a matter of um, we don't sin so we don't go to hell. When you allow sin to run rampant, what you're doing in essence with your life. Now, I don't know if many of you have had science courses in junior high or whatever, but I remember one of the first things we did. It was an experiment. Excuse me. It was an experiment. And we all were given a Petri dish that had been sanitized completely. Each one of us had a Petri dish. In the Petri dish, we would take one finger, wash our hands, rub alcohol, everything. Okay. We take that finger, we put it in. Then we just touch things and we wouldn't wash our hands and put it in another Petri dish. Just put in our little fingerprint, just one little touch, right? Both Petri dishes were put in the dark. The Petri dish that had been sanitized had very little bacteria growing in it three days later. The one that, was, that had been contaminated, just moles, just mounds and hills and valleys of mold all over from that one little fingerprint. Which Petri dish do you want your life to represent? Which one do you want to represent you? See, when anything goes, you're living a life of mold. And God will turn you over to a reprobate mind and it won't bother you when you sin. It won't bring tears to your eyes that you disappointed God because you could care less about what he thinks. It won't bother you that you hurt somebody's feelings because you really couldn't give a you-know-what. That's the love growing cold. See, ah, you just don't get how all of this is intertwined together. Mm, mm, mm. And it all involves our land, too. I was telling a friend of mine, for example, I feel like when I pray now, Blessings come immediately. I don't have months and years and months and years to wait for certain blessings because it seems like I'm living in a region that God God sent me here. He sent me and my husband here. And we live in a region that is blessed. He didn't tell us to live in this city or that city or the other city. He told us to live in this one. Now. I believe when a region is blessed, there's very little demonic activity. There's very little cursing over the land. This city has very little crime. A lot of people leave their doors unlocked. Yeah, in California. Huh. Well, but then in the other city I lived in, 
everybody I knew had one thing in common. S T R U G G L E. Everybody struggled. Everything was a struggle. Everything came hard. There were certain areas in the city where people got by very well. But down in the main part of the city, the majority of us were in struggle mode all the time. In spite of our prayers, in spite of our relationship with God, things came hard and slow. Well, I realize it's not always about your lifestyle. It's also about where you live. And if where you live is not as blessed as where God may prefer, prefer that you live, you might need to go back to the drawing table and say, okay, Lord, if it ain't me, let me know if it's where I live. But you should be living the abundant life and your life should be free from a lot of contaminants. And you should not be spreading mold everywhere you go from an unclean lifestyle. Okay. All I can say is let's be cautious not to push God to the edge where he just turns his back on us and says, reprobate mind, baby. Talk to the hand. I ain't got, I ain't got time to waste on you. I'm tired. See, God said his spirit will not always strive with us. That means me and you. His spirit will not always strive with you. So if those of you listening to this video are tinkering around and playing around and toying around with, with fornication and sin and lust and homosexuality and and, and lies and, and, and betrayal and cheating and conniving and backstabbing and gossiping and backbiting and hating. Back your truck, back your truck up. Put that baby in park. Sit, get, get your butt still and talk to God. Repent and get it right. And repent does not mean Lord, forgive me, I'm sorry. And then going back out and doing it again and again and again and again and again and again. No. Repent means you put all your might into not doing it anymore. It may be a struggle at first. You may fail a number of times, but you ain't happy about it. You fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. See, faith is not a cruise. It's a fight. You fight for holiness. Fight for righteousness. And as you get filled with more and more of God's spirit and more of his power, it becomes easy to the point where it becomes natural. God bless you as you pursue the holiness of God, the face of God, the heart of God and his righteousness. Amen. Merry Christmas.